from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. We appreciate your patronage. Uh, this past weekend, uh, the Pope was just speaking. Of course, this is a big news story. The Pope is in the United States. Ooh-wee, this is exciting. It's the Pope. <laughs> oh, God almighty. Anyway, here are uh, some of the things the Pope had to say uh, over the weekend. In case you haven't heard these... Divorce and abortion are offenses in the sight of God. Pope Benedict XVI charged, while calling on the Catholic Church to be merciful to those who would experience such events. By the way, I've done both repeatedly. I think I have, uh, you know, I have the walk to strikeout ratio in baseball. I've got a one to one divorce to abortion ratio. That's right. He told participants in a Catholic Congress on marriage of the family, the ethical judgment of the church on divorce and abortion is clear and well known. Diddling little altar boys? Well, that's a whole other story. He said they are serious offenses which violate human dignity inflict deep injustice on human and social relations, and offend God himself, guarantor of conjugal peace and origin of life. <laughs> However, he added that there were people who had committed such, quote, errors, but, quote, suffered from wounds to the soul and sought peace. The Pope out of the church has the duty to be close to these people with love and delicacy. So treat me better, will you? The Pope said so. And the Pope, as we all know, is infallible. Yes, he's infallible. That's right. The Pope said divorce and abortion are choices which sometimes develop in difficult and dramatic circumstances and are a source of profound suffering for those who take such decisions. They also affect innocent victims, the barely conceived and unborn infant, the children caught up in divorces. Yeah. Well, once again, if you guys followed my rules, you would not be, uh, you would not be uh, getting in the way of the Pope's teaching because if you didn't get married, you wouldn't be getting divorced. And if you wrapped it every time, you wouldn't be knocking anybody up. Bottom line. Just follow my rules. What amazes me, and because I have uh, dated uh, Hispanic women, I have seen this closed up. But what, what has amazed me is the number of people who think that using birth control is wrong because various popes over the years have said it's wrong. But they continue to hump away. This is something I don't understand. How can you not use birth control but continue to bang various boyfriends, live-ins, what have you? 
How how can you accept one and not the other? You know, I mean, if you are truly... By the way, the Pope is infallible, folks. That's what the Catholics believe. And to be a Catholic, you have to accept that. You have to accept that in matters of faith, the Pope is infallible. That means if the Pope comes out and says... No meat on Friday, then you don't eat meat on Friday because the Pope said so. And then if the next Pope says, you know what, come on, that was silly. Go ahead, eat meat. These things have all happened in my lifetime in the Catholic Church. Poof! The filet of fish sandwich falls off the cliff over there at McDonald's. That's right. <laughs> you know. One year I'm a sinner, the next year I'm perfectly okay. That's like the age of consent laws. when They're different in different states or different countries. One country you're a perv, another country you're a stud. You're the same person. Totally inconsistent. But the Pope is infallible, and so if the Pope says uh, no birth control... Wouldn't it make sense also that you follow the no sex until you're married rule? Uh, if you're not supposed to be using birth control and and you're not supposed to have an abortion, wouldn't that third rule also be essential? Like you don't have sex till you get married. How do people justify this stuff? They pick one from column A and one from column B. That's what they do. They're picking off a menu. Uh, it's crazy. I've dated women who, oh, no, 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 no birth control. Oh, <laughs> nobody in my family has ever used birth control. No, no, no. But then what are you doing having sex with me? A known atheist, an atheist who doesn't want to have children, who's never had children, who has no interest in getting married. Can you explain to me why you're having sex with me and then you say, oh, birth control is wrong? Isn't the whole thing wrong? Shouldn't you not be getting naked in front of me unless I've got a marriage certificate in my hand? And uh, I'm amazed uh, how many of you, uh, you know, how many of you are on birth control who are Catholic and you're not supposed to be doing that. How do we know? Because the Pope said so. No birth control for you. So that's the other thing I don't understand. It, you you have to, you know, of course, ladies. I know logic is difficult for you, but let's use a little geometric logic here. You ever take geometry? Of course, you didn't. All right. In, in in geometry class, they teach you about logic, which is one reason women hate geometry, and they force you to prove, you know, that one equals one. For example, <laughs> they force you to go through steps to prove it. Mathematically using what is called geometric logic for a reason. So let's use some geometric logic. Let's think about this for a second. Uh, all right. If, if number one, you're Catholic. Number two, if you are Catholic, right? If you are Catholic, then you accept that the Pope is infallible. If the Pope is infallible, number one, stating that he is infallible would be the first thing that you would accept. The Pope steps up to the plate and says, I am infallible. Now, if you want to be a Catholic, you have to accept that the Pope is infallible on matters of faith. Okay, so now if the Pope is infallible on matters of faith, and the Pope says no birth control, no artificial birth control, the only birth control acceptable in the Catholic Church is two. One is the pull-out method, and the other is doing altar boys. Those are the only birth control methods acceptable by the Catholic Church. So if you are using the pill or a diaphragm, or if your boyfriend is using a condom, <laughs> by definition, the only reason you're still Catholic is because the Pope doesn't know your name and address. Because you'd be excommunicated. You are not supposed to be using birth control. It's wrong. You're not supposed to do it. Okay? Moving down the list of uh, geometric theorems here. Uh, number three, uh, the Pope says, and he is infallible, uh, no premarital sex. No premarital sex. 
So the fact is that many of you ladies out there are, are, are violating the Pope's teachings and are therefore not really Catholic. Okay, because you're using birth control, you're having sex with your boyfriend, you're having sex before marriage. By definition, you're not even a Catholic. And then if you call me here and you tell me, well, I don't accept that the Pope is infallible, then by definition, you are, you, you, you're not a Catholic because the, there's other forms of Christianity if you want to be a Christian. But the difference between the Roman Catholic Church and other Christian churches is that they've got this rock star who lives in Rome, who uh, is under the delusion that he's a head of state, that this is a country somehow. How many countries can you walk in and out of as you're buying souvenirs? You know, I'm going to leave the Vatican for a second and walk over here to Rome, pick up some souvenirs, and walk back into the country again. The Vatican. Stupid. If you want to be a Catholic, you have to accept the idea that there's this rock star who lives in Rome, who comes to the country every 10, 15, 20 years, tells you to stop using birth control, stop having abortions, stop getting divorced, and what have you. And you accept the idea that you are, <laughs> that, that, that the Pope is infallible. Many of you have called this show saying, I don't accept the fact the Pope is infallible. Guess what? You're already not a Catholic. That's why I find this religion thing so entertaining. I mean, seriously, how many Catholics follow these very important rules? How many of you just, you know... I'm Catholic, but no, I don't. I don't believe in everything the Pope says. You don't have that option, folks. If you claim to be Catholic, the Pope is infallible on matters of faith. That's it. If you don't accept the Pope as being infallible, you can be some other kind of religious nut, but not a Catholic, right? Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six six. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of our program. We appreciate it. Oh, baby. By the way, speaking of the Pope, have you seen um, the latest on the molestation scandal in the church? Have you seen this? Love this. Pope Benedict XVI chided Americans for a moral breakdown, he said, and fueled the church's checks child sex abuse scandal ahead of an open-air mass before tens of thousands in Washington, D.C. today. That's right. In a speech delivered after evening prayer, the pontiff berated the bishops for their poor handling of a scandal surrounding sexual abuse of children in the church. But he urged efforts, quote, to address the sin of abuse within the wider context of sexual mores, as well as a reassessment of, quote, the values underpinning society. He said, what does it mean to speak of child protection when pornography and violence can be viewed in so many homes through media widely available today? I mean, folks, how dare the Pope try to blame the Catholic Church's scandal with child molestation on what's going on in the world. Because the Church didn't do what it could have done. And that includes whoever the Pope has been. You want to show that the Catholic Church is opposed to priests diddling altar boys? Here's what you do. Everybody who's done it, everybody on whose behalf you paid a settlement, you not only banish them from being priests... You excommunicate them permanently from the church, and you announce that anybody else we catch doing this, we are going to excommunicate. Number two, you make it the policy of the Catholic Church that any time somebody is suspected, suspected of molesting a little boy or girl, 
that the church is not just authorized, but is compelled to call the local law enforcement authorities, i.e. 911, and to report that to the police for their impartial investigation. Nobody gets transferred to another parish. Nobody gets protected. The police are called. Do you know if you go to a, 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 you know this in California, if you go to your therapist, let's say a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and you say to your therapist in the privacy of that office, doctor, I'm going to molest a little boy or girl this week. Your therapist, by law, now, you haven't even done it yet, you, you're just talking. Your therapist, by law, has to call the police and report that. That's the law. And you know what? It's a good law. That's a good law. I mean, it's going to drive people underground, but uh, some people just can't help it, and they will talk, and then they will get caught. Good. Why doesn't the same law apply to priests? If a bishop, an archbishop, a cardinal, or somebody becomes aware that someone in the church is accused of doing this, why are they not compelled to call the police? Why are they hiding these people? So I don't think the Catholic Church has any authority to be speaking about sex, molestation, abuse, rape, or anything relating to sex at all, until they take specific action that involves more than just hiring expensive law firms to besmirch the names of the of the people who've already been victimized. I, I couldn't care less what the Pope says. It's a joke. Stupid. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Danny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm okay, Danny. Uh, I just uh, heard you talking, and I, I was watching it at the base uh, early morning uh, about the Pope showing up in the uh, U.S., and I was just laughing about it because uh, people are so drawn to having a leader, and they're compelled to making religion and whatever they believe in basically um, adapt to their lifestyle, which what I'm trying to say is uh, they make it uh, work for them. They take what they want to take, and then they do whatever else. They throw everything else away. For example, the Catholic Church, they want to go have sex, but they'll follow, uh, I'll go to Mass every Sunday. You know, they do what's convenient to them, and they make religion convenient for them. And what the Pope's doing, basically, is just showing proof that he ha his followers don't pretty much follow him and the rules of the Catholic Church. They do what they want to do. And so by making these new rules, they're just he's just show showing proof that how how weak that system is. The whole Catholic system is so weak. I mean, they're falling apart from the inside. they got priests molesting little boys, altar boys. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you bet it is. Well, what can I say? I agree with everything you're saying. Pam on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. Um, Hi. I just wanted to kind of go back to what you were talking about with um, – the um, professional obligations that therapists have. As a, as a high school teacher, I have the exact same obligation. If I suspect anything where kids might be endangered, you have to say something. I think anyone involved in the church, because churches are places where, you know, obviously education is also taking place, they should be forced to say something if they even see a bruise, if they hear a rumor, anything. You should be. I understand separation of church and state. But if the Pope wants to be taken seriously, the Pope needs to say the following. The Pope needs to say, although we are not required by law uh, yeah. to answer to the state, uh, we advocate and I order all local parishes to report any suspicion of child abuse or molestation to the local law enforcement authorities. I completely agree with you, and I think it would give them so much more credence if they actually said something like that. It's like, you know, it reminds me of when you talk about paternity tests. Someone who denies taking a paternity test is guilty. And so if you, you're saying, I won't go through with having these regulations, clearly your organization is guilty as well. No doubt about it. And I don't right. why anyone would listen to what the Pope has to say about sex is beyond me.
I agree. I think if it goes against everything I believe, and I have to tell you, again, as a high school teacher, you know, I see firsthand the, the kind of movement we have away from teaching um, about sex education. It's all about abstinence education. It's just like no one out there can actually just say kids are having sex, and it's the reality. It's by really the way, by the way, we have found that even priests cannot abstain from sex. So exactly. why why in the world is, is, are we allowing uh, people from the Catholic Church to try to tell us what to teach in school? Forget it. I agree. It's not the 1600s anymore. And I see, believe me, I see. I have I teach seniors in high school, and you know they are they're all sexually active, all of them. If I and I can't as an educator say to them, you know, pr protect yourself because I'm supposed to pretend like they're just uh, you know kissing in the hallways when in fact they're you know they have very advanced. They're very advanced sexually compared to how they used to be. So right. I, I fully agree with you, Tom. Thank you so much, Pam, for the uh, call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Derek on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? Not First much, time Derek. caller, man. Thank you. you uh, I think people, anybody that doesn't agree with you are just people that uh, take an excerpt from that movie, Can't Handle the Truth. Yeah. Um, first of all, the Catholic Church... What the Pope is saying is like basically a mockery of truth, bottom line. But it's not just, not to discriminate, it's not just the Catholic Church. Religion in general, I believe, is just a control mechanism. That's all it is. You have people ripping people off in different ways, sexually, financially, whatever. Nobody would go to Vegas, say, and keep putting their money in a slot that never pays off. But people keep doing it for religion. We, people are are conditioned to, like the caller just said before, follow, not think for themselves. No one believes that there's a Santa Claus, but they believe there's somebody somewhere with uh, Svengali strings in the air puppeteering everybody around while they're looking at men just like them, tell them what to do while uh, not following that same advice for themselves. Nobody would follow that contradiction anywhere else in their life but religion. It's just something that can't, I guess they can't allow the truth about it to come out because this whole world, which is held together by it, would fall apart. But I, I think it's falling apart now from the things the church says. When the Pope goes to Africa, where you've got such a high percentage of people who are HIV positive or who have AIDS, yep. outrageous mm -hmm. numbers. When the Pope is going there telling people not to use condoms. Right. Exactly. I, I mean, this is, this is a Holocaust. This is not just making a speech. You're taking people who have, in many cases, in many countries, limited education, limited sophistication, limited technology, limited media access, limited Internet access. Uh -huh. And the and Pope comes, that. and he's the rock star, and he comes to town and tells people don't use condoms. But they know that. That's a way of controlling because the end result is they want those people to die. They want people, certain people to stay uh, poor. They want certain people to stay dumb. There's no excuse or no... Right. Um, there's nothing, there's no like coincidence why, say, so-called reality TV is the only thing everybody's popping on their station. They want people to be dumb. That way, they're not aware. That way, they can do whatever they want. And some people's religion is in a church... Some people's religion is diddling little boys, and this, they're wearing dresses themselves, and, 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 and they're supposed to be looked upon as people to trust. This is a mockery of truth, and the fact that people still follow it, while they can tell their kids there's no such thing as Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, all that, it's the same category. It's just the control mechanism. And if someone comes along and applies common sense like you, uh, some other people I've heard, Bill Maher, et cetera, that make it in public, those speeches or statements about them being atheists, people lose their freaking mind, but they have nothing to substantiate why they believe what they believe. You, on the other hand, and people like us, because I believe the same way, I believe there's a difference between a higher power or something else other than religion. Spirituality and religion are two different things that people usually lump together. But when you say you don't believe and there's reason for you not to believe, people lose their mind. When they say they believe, there's no reason for them to believe. They just stay there and all you hear is crickets. You can't get anything out of them. But they still believe. And they're, because they're still controlled. Good points. Good points. Thank you, Derek. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Giuseppe. 
Is that with a J? Yes. Hello. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Good. Uh, I, uh, I'm a big fan uh, of yours. Uh, I bought last year a new car. I don't even bother now how to change the radio. All I listen is to 97.1. I love that. And um, I happen to be one of those guys uh, that was sent into a seminary. I'm from Italy at the age of 13. And uh, um, I can tell you that uh, there were more poor magazines into that seminary than every other bookstore around uh, in my city. And, and were these uh, heterosexual or homosexual magazines, Giuseppe? Um, both, actually. Uh -huh. uh, it was pretty much everything. There was just a room that was like filled with those magazines. Pretty much every other seminarist like me and sometimes other priests, when they would go out of the seminary, say, for vacation, they were very limited. We used to live there. If you're sick, the doctor will come in, but maybe you have to go to a dentist or maybe it's Christmas or something. Then you'll bring in a magazine or two. And so the room was, like, piled up. And, of course, uh, the priests, like, at least some of them knew about it, but uh, <laughs> they never, like, got rid of them. And uh, what I wanted you to know, though, is that... Uh, for a lot of people like myself, uh, when I was asked to leave the seminary, I didn't want to because I was brainwashed. And uh, the Pope, of course, was, you know, like an idol. Is like, you know, almost God on earth. So. Uh, what uh, city in Italy uh, are you from, Giuseppe? Uh, I'm from Genoa. It's between Milan and Florence. Yeah. It's uh, the very opposite side of Venice. It's toward the... Uh, west, uh, closer to France. Now, I spent the better, I bet, couple, several weeks last summer in Italy and uh, spent a lot of time learning about the history of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Back in the 1500s, the Medici family controlled just about everything in Italy. And uh, among the things they controlled, several members of the Medici family were popes. Yes. I mean, it's 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 just pretty much... Um, kind of like it is like now, uh, when, when people have a certain power, they um, are all kind of like, they all know each other. It doesn't matter if you uh, are someone who is like very religious, you do the very same thing that, you know, uh, of the people you criticize. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I do. Okay, thank you. I do. Well, you, you do the things you criticize so that other people won't do the things you do. So that you are the only one who has the right to do the things you do. Yes, of course. But, um, <laughs> of course, when no one is watching you, right? I mean, there is That's a way to do it. You can't just do it. You are absolutely right about that. Thank you so much for the call. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like it. 1-800-5800-866. Please, men, listen. Listen. Tie yourselves up. Go put a condom on. Pay attention. Women are sick. It's the Tom Likey Show. Yeah. From Hollywood, the Tom Likey Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Manny, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Manny. Well, I just came on to say I used to be, I have a certain respect for the Catholic Church. I was raised a uh, good Catholic boy. Uh, you know, but I have my reservations for it, obviously. I used to be an altar boy for, you know, for a few years. And, uh, but it, it's just that. I feel and I believe that most religions block off the basic human pleasures, such as sex, and make it into a filthy act. And I just, I just, you know, that's what, you know, there was so many inconsistencies with religion that it was just, it wasn't for me. It kept me from being who I was, and, you know, I had to hang on my head. I mean, I have a respect, I, I, whatever people believe you know my mom is a very devout you know my whole family in fact is a very devout catholic family in fact one of my, my grandmother's was actually canonized by the you know john paul ii and so but it, it's just something that you know people that follow it devoutly is just they're limiting themselves to the basic like i said just life because one of the ten commandments is, it says thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife for hell that's what drives our economy. 
coveting other each other's things. You know, oh, that guy has a good truck. I'm going to go out and get a better one. That guy has a hot wife. I'm going to go get a hot wife. You know, so it's it, it's just a lot of inconsistencies with with religion that makes it just not attractive to me anymore. And I hung on my hat. I haven't said, you know, haven't put a foot in the, in the church in in many years. And I still believe in a God, but just I don't I don't take I don't take anything, especially after all these station issues and you know and one of the priests that I work with actually got arrested for molesting a little girl it's outrageous outrageous and Tom thank you so much can you take me out with a bong hit uh, yes I can here you go One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Padre. Hello. How we doing? Okay. Great. Listen, I've actually I lived in Rome for uh, six months, and I study a lot about this kind of stuff. And this stuff has been going on for so long. What well, these cardinals and popes, it's like higher uh, people on the uh, priest side would do. They would hire like these young boys, like people like Michelangelo, Dante, you know artists and like little poetry boys they would have them and commission them for work meanwhile they'd be doing them on the side like this stuff has been going on for so long and there's actually a church in rome dedicated where you have to be like a like a like a waitlister to get in it's all like nothing but phallic symbols and stuff with this kind of act going on but you can't get into the public can't get in like it's outrageous how I mean, it's been going on forever and they know it wow well, I know that's true. I mean, after spending a good amount of time last year in the Vatican and uh, in Rome and uh, being uh, taken on personal tours of the Medici castles and St. Peter's Basilica and uh, the Sistine Chapel and hearing the uh, last 500 years of history of the Roman Catholic Church, uh, I am more uh, convinced than ever that it's just a big fraud. Oh, it totally is. I mean, like I said, this stuff has been going on for so long. They just hire these little boys, you know, centuries and centuries, this kind of stuff's been going on, and it's been covered up, and they and they know that. That's the thing. It is a complete fraud. And to say that they don't know about it or don't like it's new, like what's going on over the United States has been new, it's not so old it's ridiculous. It's just like, you know, a right of acts that they think, you know, maybe through uh, the priesthood there. Good point, Scott. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Desiree on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Oh, this is Desiree. Hi. How I just said that. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Um, I'm a psychologist, and normally I don't agree with anything you say, but I have to say I strongly agree with this point, so I had to call. Tell me what point you agree with. Um, that priests and anyone in positions of power or the position to greatly influence people should be mandated reporters. Yes, and the Pope should be the one to say it. I, I agree. I strongly agree. He has, you know, they say with great power comes great responsibility, and he has huge, he has huge power, therefore great, great responsibility. I mean, if the Pope wants to be telling the rest of us what to do, step one, clean your own house. I agree. I agree. I mean, you have a lot of power, and so that's normally why I have a lot of issues with things you have to say, because... Um, you have a lot of power, and there's a lot of people who follow what you say. So I think you should have those same, you know, constraints also. But, you know, he, he, he's not doing what he needs to do. He's not doing what he needs to do. And, he, and I think that's because he's scared of losing people. And, um, you know, it's all based on fear. But it's not based on reality, as your other caller said. There's, peop there's children having sex. There's, there's adolescents having sex. And there's injustices going on in the church, and he's not dealing with reality. It's not reality to think that those people aren't molesting children. So I really do think they should be mandated reporters. And I think they're even and and, and the fact that uh, that uh, Cardinal Roger Mahoney is still Cardinal Roger Mahoney and not Prisoner Roger Mahoney is is beyond I, me. Exactly, and it's why should they me. be held to different? Why should they be held to different standards? Why are they above the law? It's absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, to, for me, it's not about religion. It's about spirituality. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that, you know, there's no God. I, I don't know whether there's a, you, whatever you want to call it, God or the universe. There's something out there. And for me, spirituality works, but I'm a recovering Catholic in a sense that, to me, church 
when you circumscribe it, you limit certain things, and then you all have to follow certain rules, or you don't, you know, you you're you're you can't be here. You're not in this circle. You're not in that circle, and it's so divisive. And it's the whole reason that we're in so many wars and so much strife, which is the complete opposite of what spirituality is about. So it, it's it's such a joke. It's such a joke to me because it's anything but peaceful. Anything but um, you, uniting. It's it's divisive, and so that's my issue with religion, is that it's not spiritual. Agreed. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to. Uh, wow, look at these. Let's say hello to Edward on the Tom Likas show. Hey, good afternoon, Tom. How are you? Great. I'm calling from a little bit of a different perspective. Calling as a court recognized victim in a uh, in another state back on the east coast and uh, it's, it's kind of interesting we talk about the, uh, the the catholic churches the power that they have and their ability to manipulate the state in, in which i was abused for three and a half years by a priest from the ages of fifth through into eighth grade um had a, has a very conservative law that cuts the statute of limitations at the age of 21 uh, i.e once you're 21 you cannot take no matter what allegations you have, you can take no action against the perpetrator of those those actions or the organization to which they belong. The Catholic Church lobby is so strong, amidst public outcry, they have refused to change that law, and it still remains on the books. They upped it to the age of 30. Um, now, when I was 23, that priest was arrested. The priest that abused me was arrested and convicted for molesting another boy. He was sentenced to an 11 and a half to 23 month sentence, of which he did zero time because as he was being inducted, being uh, put into the jail, the church came and got his sentence commuted to a rehab facility where they send pedophile priests and alcoholics. Now, mind you, I, I testified at, against him at his sentencing. He apologized to me in open court saying he knows what he did is wrong, yet I spent 15 minutes under cross-examination by the diocese lawyer because they were trying to blow my story out of the water, and there was not a single hole in it. I remember times, places, hot tubs, you name it, where this stuff went on. And guess what? You know, it's that the, what the psychologist had called earlier when she talked about uh, with great power comes great responsibility, this guy was – absolutely a predator like many of them are. I came from a broken family with an abusive alcoholic father. My mother said, you know what, go to church. You know, go spend time with father such and such. You know, don't worry, your father, when he comes home, he's going to be drunk, go do this. So instead of getting my, my ass beat by my dad, I got, well, you know, I got abused like three and a half years. And the church did nothing about it. They, when I, I made the allegations to that, di that particular diocese, they said, you know what, I'm sorry, the statute of limitations is in effect here. We do not want to talk to you. Wow. There you go. So the Pope is really in no position uh, to be Absolutely telling the not. rest of us what we ought to be doing and not doing. Absolutely not. You know, it, it became such an issue, Tom, that when I left, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a devout Christian. I've left the Catholic Church. I'm not, you know, I don't throw my beliefs to anybody. But when my, my mother said to me, why? And I said to her, if you look at the Bible, Mom, it says, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, the reason, you look at California, Orange, L.A., and, and San Diego Diocese paid out nearly $2 billion last year to victims because the state of California had the guts enough and the, 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 the felt the responsibility enough to say, you know what, we're going to open up a window where we, we throw out the statute for four years. You're gonna, if you have an allegation against a priest, bring it forward. Let's clear this up. Let's get this done. Let's, you know, and other places haven't done that. And, my, and, and you know why? Because think about, I was, I was the, the face of a 35 plaintiff lawsuit against that particular diocese back east. And they did nothing. Oh, I'm sure they did nothing. It's outrageous, but I feel your pain, Edward. I thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.